Hello. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about something called P5JS instance mode. What is that? Why would you want to use it? What's the point of that? Well, okay, so uh, by, by the way, this is also sometimes refer, uh, uh, re related or referred to as namespacing in JavaScript. So what do I mean by namespacing, instance mode, that sort of thing? So look at this, a P5JS sketch, a single global variable X, a function setup, and a function draw. I hit run, and we see this nice purplish circle moving about, kind of painting on the screen. You know, this is the kind of stuff we do every day in our lives, make these little P5 sketches with these purple circles, that type of thing. So, where might this need more than just this? Instance mode. Why would you need instance mode? Okay, so here's one scenario. Let's say I wanted to do this. Create can and let's make this canvas smaller. 200, 200. And let's make it. What if I wanted to have two canvases in the window. So when I run this sketch and I look at the browser page, I would see somehow like two different canvases. Well, clearly that doesn't work. P5.js in its default global mode, plain old regular way it's written, you can't actually add two canvases to the page. So this is one reason why you need instance mode. Here's another reason. What if I were to say something like, Whoops, uh, var window equals hello. <laughs> oh, I wonder if this will break everything. It's giving me a warning, by the way. Let's run this. Okay, so this happened to work, but it's a little bit dangerous. And let's see what the warning is, right? Look at this, redefinition of window. So window is a very important key global variable that just exists in JavaScript in the browser. It's a variable that's referring to the window object, this window that's the whole sort of like browser window itself. But I want to have like a window variable in my P5.js sketch because I like the word window and it's what I want to name my variable. This is a problem because I don't want to mess with the global namespace. So uh, that sounds like a horrible thing, global namespace, and for the most part in your life, I hope you don't have to worry about the global namespace, but sometimes you do. And in the way that you write P5.js code, saying function setup, function draw, var x, all those things are global variables that exist across all of your JavaScript code. So if you also are incorporating other libraries like D3 or popcorn or some other thing, that you might have variable names conflict with other things and this can be a problem. So in essence, namespacing is the act of saying all of the variables and things associated with my particular program are going to be under a particular name. Like I'm always going to say instead of var x, I'm always going to say shiftman.x. Instead of var window, I'm always going to say shiftman.window. So shiftman.window can never conflict with the global window because it isn't the global window, it's shiftman.window. So these are the main two reasons. If you're in some kind of complex scenario where namespacing, having everything in your P5 sketch under a particular name becomes important to you, or simply if you need more than one canvas on the screen, um, uh, uh, on the screen in the window itself, these are reasons why you need instance mode. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's actually look at, uh, here's the thing though, if you don't really need instance mode, maybe you don't want instance mode because it's like a lot of extra code to write and it looks a little bit confusing, but it is interesting and you might learn something if you're still watching this video. Okay, here we go. So what I wanna do uh, is go back to this sketch just the way it was. Now, where's the bottom of the editor window? Oh, I'm zoomed in, no wonder. So let me move this back over here. Let me look at where I am. I'm standing next to the code, great. So the first thing I wanna do is figure out uh, how we're gonna write the instance mode. Oh, I was gonna use the whiteboard, I ah, forget it. <laughs> I had a new whiteboard I was gonna use, but this video doesn't really merit it. I, I, we'll see. Um, so basically what I, what I want to do is I want to say something like this. This is the idea of namespacing. I want to create an actual object, right? This, this is, P5 does this kind of magically for you. You shouldn't be able to do <laughs> what we just did. It's just like write a setup function and somehow it magically gets triggered and write a draw function and somehow magically it loops. P5 is 
written this way so that you can kind of get started quickly and behind the scenes it's like looking for a global setup function and looking for a global draw function. But ultimately what exists is like a P5 object and I'm calling it my P5, excuse me, I want to make a new P5 object. And that new P5 object should have in it all of the variables associated with my sketch and all of the, um, uh, the all of the uh, uh, functions associated with my sketch, the setup, the draw, all that sort of stuff. So, do 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 do. Uh, awkward edit just happened because I messed something up and went off on a tangent, but I'm back now. And the point where I left you was, and I also made some changes in the code, the very slight, you know, pause, look at it, nothing important. But the point where I am at is, Instead of having all of this stuff in the global namespace, a global X, a global Y, a global setup, a global draw, what I want is to swoosh everything inside of this object, this new P5 object I'm making, which I'm storing in a variable called my P5. So how do I do that? Well, we see that there's this line of code that says my P5 equals a new P5, and then we're passing in this thing called sketch. So sketch, the variable sketch, is actually going to serve essentially as the template, the template for the, the thing that's actually going to run. So I make a variable called sketch, which actually equals a function, which is a little bit weird, but this is just kind of how things, <laughs> when you don't know what something should be in JavaScript, it probably should just be a function. It's actually, this is a closure, and I don't, I mean, just even saying that, that's where I, that's why I had to stop the video <laughs> and start over, so I don't want to go down that road. But you can think of this function as the template for creating the P5 sketch. So the line of code that says var my P5 equals new P5 is actually making the P5 sketch, causing it to run. And this thing called sketch is where I'm gonna put in all the pieces. So uh, without, I need both of these things. Without the template, I can't have the sketch. But I can't make a sketch without the template. So let's look at how we do that. So notice how this function takes an argument and I arbitrarily called it P because P is the thing that I'm gonna attach all the stuff that's gonna go in the sketch too. I'm gonna to say p.x equals 100, and p.y equals 100. And then I'm gonna say p.setup equals function. And I'm gonna say p.draw equals function. So now, this you can see I'm filling in, I'm namespacing everything, I'm putting everything under this variable p, p.setup, p.draw, p.x. And then we can see what's the other stuff that goes in setup, I can copy this, and get it, and I can say p.createCanvas, and p.background, I can zoom out a little bit. I can go down here, I can get all this stuff that was in draw, and I can delete all of this now. I don't need any of this global stuff anymore, and I can paste this all in here and say p.fill, p.stroke, and p.ellipse, and p.x, and p.y, and P dot X, I should make this in a song, and P dot Y, and P dot random, and P dot random, but I don't need to say P dot 10, because 10 is a number. Okay, um, and now I run this, <laughs> it doesn't work, what did I get wrong, is there an error? Uh, no error, okay, so hold on, let's look at this. This looks pretty good to me. Uh, what I did is I created, uh, you know what, um, I wonder if um, this actually needs to be below. Uncaught reference error. So, so interestingly enough, I just was like muttering under my breath a mistake that I made, but I need to declare the template first and fill everything in before I can actually make that P5 object. Now I did get an error. Uncaught reference error X is not defined. Line 14, look at that. X and Y are no longer global variables. They're namespaced under this thing called P, P.X, P.Y, and there we go. Now we have our sketch, and I, I wish this sketch wasn't so long. I can remove a few line breaks here just so you can kind of see it all on this one page. But you can see now, here's the template for the sketch, everything namespace, and now I'm creating that sketch. Now, there's some interesting things going on here. For example, what if I, I'm going to do something totally insane. But what outside of this, what if I were to say set timeout, this is a JavaScript function by the way, a JavaScript function that allows you to do what? Ec trigger event like I'm going to uh, re uh, reset background. I'm, I'm off on a little bit of a tangent here, but that's okay. And I'm do that in three seconds, 3,000 milliseconds. Then I'm going to define that function reset background. 
And in that function, I'm going to say my p5 dot background to uh, uh, 51. So look at this. That sketch, that p5 sketch, is now inside of this object my p5. So elsewhere in the code, right? This is how I might use p5 in connection with another library. If I'm in some other piece of code that's completely outside of the whole setup and draw in p5 thing, I can reference that sketch, call functions on it, execute variables in it by saying my p5. So if I say my p5.x, I'm talking about this particular x up here. But remember, in the template, everything's getting attached to p which gets put into sketch, and sketch then gets made into my p5. And after the fact now, everything associated with that sketch is in the variable my p5. So let's see if this works. And I can run this, and we can count to three. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, right? And if I uh, change this to set interval, we can say one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, background. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, background. One, 1,000. Oh, the thing went off. You know what I should do is I should also say my p5.x is in the middle. Now look at this, my p5.y. Now look at this. What's wrong with this? Something is horribly wrong here. Not horribly wrong here, right? Remember, everything is namespace. Width and height don't exist in the global world. So I need to say my p5.width, my p5.height, and I can run this now, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. Okay, so you can see that this works, and it's kind of a nice thing that you've got. And you know, it's hard to see, and that camera went off, but I'm going to turn it back on. It's hard, it might be a little bit harder to see the, the value here just in this sort of like trivial example, but you could imagine if you've got a lot of code that this could be useful. But one more thing let's do before we go in this video, which is probably about 12 minutes so far, is Let's look at how this can allow you to have two canvases on the same page. So, uh, 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 so let's look at that. So one thing I could do is I could rename this to sketch one. Actually, insanely, here's something that's kind of insane. Before I even do that, let's call this my p5 one. And let's just do this, my p5 two. Look at this, and I'm going to run this. Look at that, two on the page operate. So I could just duplicate that sketch, by the way, without, uh, oops, and, uh, you know, only one of them, let's do this, uh, this reset background thing. Um, so I, I duplicate that sketch, but notice only one of them is getting its background reset because I'm only referring to that one. So I don't know if you're following me because I just like I'm thinking of this weird stuff on the fly, but this is actually kind of great about instance mode. I made this template for a sketch, object-oriented programming, hello. <laughs> I made this template for the sketch, right? And then I'm baking copies of it, and I don't have to rewrite that code. I could just duplicate it, and we could write this in a loop, and suddenly have hundreds of these on the page, all as separate canvases. But you'll notice that I could also say, I could call this sketch one, and I could call this sketch two, and I could, I'm, I'm gonna do something totally uninteresting here, which is just basically have it be the same sketch, but with, uh, different color, and you can see now I have two sketches, two canvases on the same page. I can refer to them as my P51. I don't, I don't like my names here. Uh, my P51 uh, in somewhere else. So what instance mode allows you to do is take all the stuff that you would normally write globally and put it inside of this like function, this closure function, this function that and attach everything to this variable p, p.x, p.y, p.setup, p.draw. Then you have this template for making versions of that sketch that will appear on the page, and you can control whether they get made, yes or no. Um, so hopefully this makes sense to you, and as you might find this useful uh, in different scenarios where you need it. I, I'm often saying like, oh, I don't to do that. I think you need instance mode. <laughs> and now I can point people to this video. Um, and so uh, ask your questions in the comments. I'm trying, if you make something like, you know, if you're looking to do some kind of weird experiment, maybe like fill the screen with 100 copies of the same sketch and see what happens uh, that way. And also, you know, what happens when you start integrating the DOM library with this stuff? That's kind of interesting to think about. Um, using P5 in conjunction with another library and namespacing it. Try this stuff out. If you do anything, uh, share it in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you in another video in the future.